Accidental Activist. I am Shanda Masta, the Serious Blonde. Welcome and please welcome my guest today, the all-knowing, the all-powerful man behind the curtain, Oz Lafar. Hi. Welcome, Oz. You know what? I oh, no, I can't think hear I, you. I, I think I was muted there for oh, a second. There you, go, there I, you, go. I, you know, I was so overwhelmed by that wonderful uh, introduction, the all-powerful Man behind the curtain. I don't know how powerful I am, uh, other than my smell. But uh, yeah, it's a pleasure <laughs> to be here with you and uh, kick You're off. Funny. Yeah, yeah, well, you make me yeah. laugh. So, how are you doing this Sunday? I am doing fine. It's Sunday brunch with the accidental activists, so I'm happy. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm still in the nighttime, and you know, I got Seattle showing through on my mic and on my my shirt. So I'm I'm feeling very Seattle centric this morning. S Seattle centric. Well, it looks good on you. You can wear <laughs> you can wear Seattle all day long so you you look really great so yeah maybe yeah. someday it'll be cascadia who yeah, knows cascadia there you go so today's show we've got a few things we're going to kind of go over what we went over on thursday night i, I want to clarify a few points just people in the chat asking questions and uh we're gonna run a few clips we have an amazing song to share that was wrote for the show and we have um a couple of cl or a clip that I want to kind of talk about from Kyle Kalinsky. And uh, then we're going to talk about future shows and how you can help us out, help us get the word out, help us find those amazing activists that are out there supporting, you know, the issues that affect us every day. So uh, I'll actually go ahead and throw up, you know, my slide deck. We'll just kind of go back through it. I think slide two maybe would be good to start with. Uh, how about slide three? That's the slide one. Slide three is yeah, better. That's yeah, that's a yeah, good yeah. one. I like that one. That's good. You look great. Oh, I think, yeah. So a couple of things I wanted to clarify on. What have we got going on in chat? Good morning, chat. Lail's in. Uh, you know, I was not, I was a state delegate for Bernie Sanders in 2016. I just want to clarify that I wasn't a national delegate. I had actually applied to be a national delegate. I, I wrote like a, probably a five page essay, you know, telling my life story and why I would be a good choice to represent Bernie Sanders and why I thought my voice would be important to be a part of the democratic party. And uh, we now know, you know, naively, we didn't realize back then how deeply they would vet us. And uh, that's when the purity tests come in and the Bernie or bus that I had supported for the few months leading into that convention really cost me being able to be a delegate. But now in retrospect, I, I thank God I wasn't a delegate. I thank God I didn't have to go through what those poor people went through. I, I commend every one of them and what they sacrificed to fight for our voice, you know. So that that's just one point I wanted to clarify. I was actually a part of a media team that was on the outside of the DNC. So that's why I had so many pictures of arrests and, you know, helicopters and protests and whatnot. Well, it's always good to make everything perfectly clear because in today's social media, they beat the living shit out of you if you're not 100% genuine. So thank you well, for clarifying. And I'm that. very genuine, man. Yes, you I are. Have, you are the I genuine very blonde. very thin filter. <laughs> I say it how it is. I don't pull no punches and I don't want anybody to think that I'm something that I'm not because I'm perfectly content with what I am. And so, um, you know, I, the reason I'm making these clarifications is, is there's a lot of people that aren't happy that I've been handed a platform. <laughs> and so the videos are getting around, you know, our, our local uh, e-boards and Democratic Party. And there's a lot of people that aren't happy that I, I'm speaking truth about what I've witnessed in the last five years, you know, especially with the purity tests. And just to give you guys a small example of what I take on a daily basis is um, I, I'm constantly attacked and smeared even when I'm not doing anything. Uh, I, I have my page trolled, you know, all of my social media platforms, they, they screenshot anything that I do. And so I, I ran for state committee woman in 2016 or 2017, actually at the reorg. And there was a hundred people in the room. We got there, you know, I was nervous. I had my speech ready. I'd never got up in front of a dim committee and gave a speech. And as I'm talking, I see 
people passing around papers and you know i'm like okay so i kind of lean over to see what the paper is and it's a screenshot of my facebook and it's a pbs post of jill stein and it's me saying i support jill stein well a lot of the bernie people went to jill stein including myself and i'm going to tell you when we were on the streets of philadelphia Bernie never came and saw us once. Bernie never was in the streets doing a rally. Even though we'd invited him to numerous rallies, he never once was out on the streets. Nina wasn't out there. Uh, pretty much none of the surrogates were out there. You know, you've got a hundred thousand heartbroken Bernie supporters. Many had, you know, raised money, borrowed money, came across the country to be there to support Bernie in this, you know, contested convention because we were Bernie said he was going to fight all the way to the convention right in 2016. So here we are. I mean, we are literally heartbroken. Bernie has turned his delegates over. We are in the streets like, you know, what are we going to do? Who was there on the ground? in the crowd with us, Jill Stein. And Jill Stein is saying the exact same things that Bernie was saying, but even more to an extent that, you know, we wanted to support her. Cornell West is standing with her. Shama is standing there with her. You know, these were the people that were on the ground. So to me, I speak, I, I'm an action type of person. If, you know, Jill's there, Jill's saying, let's go, let's go. They even offered Bernie the top of the green ticket, if you remember, you know, at that point. So I just... I want it clear that, yes, I supported Jill Stein. I still support the Green Party. I, you know, I, I'm not a member of the Green Party. Um, the purity test that we now see from the DNC says that, you know, we can throw you out of the Dem Party if we think that you are not loyal. And, and so that purity test has been used on me a good amount from the from the local Dems and the state Dems. And it'll be used again. And, you know, what what you're going through is you're talking about this is... You know, now that Bernie has bent, bent the knee to the establishment, again. What, again, what you are doing is you are basically outlining the journey for Bernie of you becoming the accidental activist. And when the party, you talk about the party with this purity test from the party at the people, the purity test stops at the issues because the issues always remain the same. The person if the person is behind the issues like you and so many of us in the group this morning and uh, oh, by the way, we have Barbara, we have Veg, we have Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Veg. Veg. Hi, Veg. And Jilly's here. Yeah, Jilly. Who else do you see? Dennis. Dennis from Hello, Germany. Lisa. Great show yesterday, Dennis. Ah, yes. Great show, guys. I loved it. I love it, love it, love it. Yeah, it's great. So anyway, I digress. I just wanted to, I want to, I want to back you up on this because the yeah, establishment Democrats... Those those tools that are vetting people like you is, oh, she's not a real Democrat. She's a Green Party supporter. The bottom line is, everybody, the issues are what matters the most. And we're going to have ca leaders carved out like Bernie and and Jill and, you know, the Democratic Socialists, everybody who all agree on the issues. It's the Democratic Party and the Republican, those donor-based issues. That's what they're trying to protect. So I just exactly want to clear that up. Yeah, and go ahead, take off. I'm sorry. Which slide uh, are we on, by the way? That was an excellent point. They are donor-based issues. They I, are. I call them owners, not donors. Owners, owners, are. owners. Are we on slide five or four right here? with the Yeah, if you want to move the slides okay. up, just let people take a look yeah, at them. Yeah, take a look. I mean, if, they want, if they want the breakdown of each picture and slide, they can They can check out Thursday's show. Yeah, Thursday's show. This is, this is just kind of an extra emphasis on who you are as being the accidental activist and kind of a Sunday brunch with the accidental act activists and Oz is cooking today. So yeah, Oz is coffee? cooking. Oz is cooking. So you you guys just belly up to the bar and I'll cook you an omelet. So go right oh. ahead there, Shanda. Sounds what? like a good breakfast yeah. for Sunday. Yum. <sighs> yum yum. <laughs> so uh let's see, I kind of lost my spot My fault. My fault. <laughs> you got me thinking somewhere else. Yeah. So, you know, uh, the amount of harassment that I've taken inside the Dems, when I filed for PCO the second time, which was two years ago, um, I filed on a Wednesday, which gave them two days heads up to make sure that they found somebody to run against me. I wasn't trying to be sneaky. I didn't file at the last minute. I literally was like, hey, I'm filing, you know, come at me. 
And I started getting uh, harassing phone calls and um, harassing emails that gave me a time clock to withdraw. Like you have 24 hours to withdraw and remain a private citizen. And then once you don't withdraw, you don't know what we're capable of. And those were the exact words. You don't know what we're capable of. And, and so, you know, I just hold my head up high and I just keep going and I keep going. And, and OK, you know, you're not going to scare me. You're not going to intimidate me. What can you use against me? I put all of my stuff out there. I put my flaws out there, you know. I'm a recovering opiate addict. I live in a trailer park. You know, what more can I put out there for people to attack me with? And so I sailed through that, kept my head up high and uh, come to the reorg this last year. I wasn't running for anything, but I thought I'd show up just to see how, what's going on, you know. And sure enough, I come in the room. There's more papers being passed around more uh slandering of me you know and finally now i'm going to the the chairs of the the local lds and the state party and saying come on really is this what you guys got to do you got to intimidate people to try to keep them out of the race well that's exactly what we saw this last week and in my little town in my little county they have literally intimidated every single progressive pco that we've had into dropping out we had 30 in 2016 we had two filed this month two last week and you know it's it's a wall that they come up against and many people are not as thick-skinned as i am so you get these everyday people that that want to go in they want their voice to be heard they want to fight but they're intimidated and i don't blame them not one bit so then where do they take their energy and really I want to focus the show on activism um, issues. Let, let's, you know, you don't have to go idly wasting your time in this Democratic Party. It's not necessary anymore. Let them do the busy work, right? Because they used us. They co-opted us. Yeah, yeah, they absolutely did. Oh, uh, is your, your... They, they absolutely did. Can, 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 can you hear me now? Okay. I can hear Sorry. you now. Sorry, I, I've, got a, I've got a couple of girls that are barking in the background so i'm trying to keep it out of your show anyway yeah no um <laughs> what they're doing to you is is not unique they're doing it across the country and in washington state the establishment this week was filing week so what do they do any candidate they don't like they take an establishment tool or or even worse a conservative a centrist conservative and they basically get them to file and they're going to try and bleed votes from our other great progressive candidates well this is the kind of screwing around that that all uh, all establishment uh, parties uh, well the republicans and the D democrats they both they're, they're equally nasty when it comes to running a race it's not caring about the issues at all they just want their tool in there so they can put their hand in the back of that little sock puppet and make them chirp to whatever uh, whatever worm they throw out there and that's donor cash so you know we all we all in this group have seen this over and over again you have our sympathy shanda and your courage for standing up and we will make this platform scream for you and anybody <laughs> else that wants to come come and have a platform i will do it i can the whole uphill media family will because the bottom line is we're ready to eat the rich and uh this has got to stop so please continue please continue yes you know i got e i got text messages this week that said well you should clarify on a couple of points some of the things that you said on your show thursday night uh you know are, are going to cause backlash and, and make people mad and my response was you know there's a reason i didn't run for pco again for a, a so, you know, a third time. It, it, I don't need to capitulate to the Democratic Party. I do not need their approval. I don't want their approval. I don't care what they're saying about me. I don't care what they do. You know, I, I'm not outwardly attacking them by speaking the truth of what I've seen. So they can get over it. <laughs> you know, that point, that's the point I wanted to make in the very beginning of this. And there's just one more thing I wanted to clarify it. That was, I wasn't actually at Standing Rock. I had planned on going to Standing Rock, but I was running for state committee woman. And the reorg was towards the end of November. So I didn't actually go, but I did support networks and help build networks that, you know, sent food and, and, and that, you know, the, one of the most important things that uh, we can do while we're sitting in front of our screens on our social media is to share, click the like button, 
share the information, share it into groups. I know that all of these different platforms are, are censoring, suppressing, algorithming out. That's why we got to work even harder. So, you know, there, we know our ways. So, you know, copy, paste, don't just share it straight to Facebook. We all have our ways of trying to get the information out. But it's so important because that was what we were doing at Standing Rock. You know, I was getting live video feed. I, I, I run a group called uh, the Amer American or the American activists. <laughs> I have so many activist groups and uh, we put all of the live stream feeds that were coming in. We had digital smoke signals. I don't know if you guys have ever checked them out, but they're amazing uh, independent native media network. They were, they had a drone. So we were getting a lot of footage from them. You know, we just, we were a central hub for this information to come in so then we could get it back out. And, and so it's so important for the people that can't get up and go be on the front lines to share everything that everybody else is doing you know i think i think that that's one of the most useful things that we can do we need to take advantage of this communications while we have it because we're exactly. going to need we're going to need a spine and infrastructure for communications when and if they start pulling plugs or you know throttling us down so that's that's point well taken we're not out for this to uh pad our bank accounts because uh well piggy banks in our case um it's it's just you you know we just need to help each other get the word out and create that basically modern day French underground because this exactly. is what's happening with AI and everything else which is another topic I hope you do cover especially women in this time of AI and 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 loss of your privacy and everything else how it affects the women's point of view on all this stuff which I'm really excited about you know, actually, I will. I want to do a segment on that. I do know a lot about AI. <laughs> I really do. So, yeah, we'll, we'll actually cover that um, probably in a future show. Terrific. So, you know, I, I, I want to point out something that most people don't real, realize or even remember. We weren't calling ourselves progressive in, in 2016. Do you remember this, Oz? Yep. I sure yeah. do. I, I So I remember being in our Democratic headquarters and we were trying to come up with a name to call our committee, you know, and um, I got pulled aside by a senior member and said, hey, don't use the word progressive. Anytime you use the word progressive, you know, it's failed for 70 years. Look at, you know, coming out of FDR and whatnot. And now we and I was like, I didn't choose it. You know, <laughs> this is the, the millennials are the ones choosing to call themselves that. And I. Uh, I just love that we steamrolled them. We are who we are. We are what we are. And we are progressive. You know, we want progressive change. And, and so people need to remember, we weren't even progressives four years ago. Yeah, you know? it's less we, than we've come a, a long yeah. way, baby. Yeah, it's less than a label, but more of a movement. It, it's, right. you know, that, you know, you can label anybody anything you want. The uh, Democratic Socialists or, you know, uh, what was the one we had yesterday? We had a big meeting with... Uh, out in uh, Ohio or something, but it was uh, it was similar to Democratic Socialists. But it's people who give a shit about what's happening to the public, to the working poor. And again, labels don't matter. It's the issues that people exactly. stand up for. And um, one of the things that uh, came out of that, uh, I think it was Friday, they were talking about it on one of the one of the social media programs is how what are we going to do when we get out on the streets as far as being an activist, uh, accidental or otherwise? Um, how do we demonstrate? Well, one of the cuts that I got from Friday's uh, social media was they were really pushing a thing called Pulse pulse activism pulse getting in the street and what that is it's the model of the the yellow vests uh in hong kong it's it's not a constant occupy like occupy goes it's a right. pulse it's it's just taking it easy and picking your shots do you agree with that being the I, accidental i do activist? agree with that you know i've i have occupied and there's so many logistic issues that come with occupying because once you take a space, you have to hold the space. But then once you hold the space, you have to feed the people in the space. You have to keep the people in the space busy. You have to keep them on point. You know, it can go awry so many different ways. So, yes, you're absolutely right. Just these small bursts of, you know, punch throughs. But I, I also think that, you know, the main thing we can do is hit them in the pocketbook. And, and time and time again, we have proven this, whether it's a general strike, whether it's shutting down ports, whether it's, you know, a divesting. As long as we're messing with their money, we're making our point. Absolutely. And and that's what we need to do. We need to be wise about this. A lot of us can't afford 
can't afford to go to jail, even, you know, if we chained ourselves to the front of the White House gates. You know, is that the best use of what you can do? Some people, yes. Some people are going to l- sit on railroad tracks and doing that thing. And we will support you whatever way we yep. can. But the, the strategy, the tactics, the goal setting, it has to be an organized thing. It can't be a feel-good thing. And I'm not knocking some of these marches, the Million Man March or, or you know, the Women's March or anything else. Busy work. What, yeah, what I'm talking about is actually getting behind those marches and having a purpose rather than making a statement. Because the statement is important, but you have to have both. And I got, like, beat up on it at a couple of meetings when I asked asked okay well we're going to have this great march coming up i.e whatever it is what is the point what is the goal is it going to make us all feel good and have zero impact or do we have a goal so planning is important you're all smart in here you're all engaged you all you all think about these things so it depend it's dependent on you to actually step up and be a leader activist and help coordinate these things it's not a hierarchical thing where you hang your hat on bernie sanders or jill stein it's what you get behind as far as the issues and you thoughtfully engage in the discussion to yes. plan these things strategically i think i hear a drone you better take over <laughs> you got yeah you got too fired up there they're coming for you and that, that's not even a joke i mean i don't even know how many activists i know who go uh found a drone over my house the other day you know it's kind of scary it is what it is but we know very well that what we're risking by speaking truth to power i i do I, you know what will it result Here's, who knows you know hillary loves to call us terrorists <laughs> that's, that's scary oh, you yeah. know no i i am i am an American, I am voicing my First Amendment right. That that is not terrorism in any yeah, way. Yeah, I, I, the serious blonde terrorist doesn't really do anything for me. I think the serious <laughs> blonde does because you're speaking truth to power. Sorry, Hillary, go have another cappuccino. Right. So, yeah. Uh, Good morning, Sharon. Sharon Abreu just dropped in. Ah, uh, Sharon, I'm glad you're here. Sharon wrote us a beautiful song that we're going to feature here in a little bit. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the lyrics speak to just who I am and what I've done and how I feel. You, she encapsulated it so beautifully. Yeah, it's a great song, beautifully sung too. Thank you, Sharon. We're looking forward to spinning that out here shortly. Yes, and we this, are. Boy, the chat is just going for it this yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They sure are. Say. Boy, they're chattering. They're chattering at they over are. brunch. Over brunch. I better get going on those omelets. Well, continue the there, brunch. Agenda. Keep going. So, uh, you want to cue up our Kyle Kolinsky clip? Yeah, our Kyle Kolinsky. Why don't you give a little? Let's talk about some. uh, Yeah, get it. Give this an intro before we get it going here a little bit. Okay, so I believe this is a clip with uh, President Trump talking about how mail-in ballots across the country. Uh, is a way of rigging the election. But then he contradicts himself and says, look, we just won two races with mail-in ballots. So that didn't make any sense. But I'll let it speak for itself, and then we'll give a little commentary on it. Okay. Do you want to run the full clip? It's five minutes? No, I just... Maybe the four minute mark, I think, is where just the four. I think everybody gets the idea. And Kyle's Kyle's dialogue is really good. Usually anyway. I love Kyle. Yeah, he's great. He's great. Okay, here we go. We're going to kick it off. This is Trump says voting by mail is corrupt and cheating. Well, yeah, I think so. He has a point there, unfortunately. The hilarious claim and then immediately contradicting himself. This is something I've been seeing a lot more of recently. This is a claim that Fox News has been going full steam ahead with. Let's watch. Stimulus should move forward. There's been some Republicans who suggest that. that I don't know. It depends. I, it's certainly not the package that I saw today. Basically, if you look at that package, what they want more than anything else is uh, it's a voting package. They want to be able to make sure that Republicans can't win an election by putting in all sorts of uh, uh, mailing ballots. Now, I don't know if you do because the press doesn't report this too much, but we had two very big victories last night. We won very big. Tom Tiffany. One very big in the great state of Wisconsin. You saw that. That was uh, last night it came in. That was a big one. You saw that, Doug. And uh, one by a very, very substantial margin. And in California, of all places, we had a fantastic race. And this was all mail-in ballots. This was all uh, mailed ballots. And when they saw, because it was mailed, they saw they were losing three days ago, and they ended up putting polling booths in, into basically Democrat areas. 
Uh, but despite that, it's looking like Mike Garcia, I don't know if they've called the race yet, but he was substantially ahead. That's the problem with mail-in ballots. Are, are they going to dump a whole pile of ballots on your desk just before the election? So the problem with the mail-in ballots, it's subject to tremendous uh, corruption, tremendous corruption, cheating. And so I'm, I'm against it. And if you look at the bill that Nancy Pelosi is putting in, has a lot to do with elections, and then we're not gonna we're not gonna lose elections because of that. Is that still a non-starter? And I do think you should mention the fact that the Republicans won two major congressional seats last night. I think it's really worthy of mentioning. All right. So Trump's claim is that hey, the reason why Democrats want to move to these all mail-in elections are because they want to steal the election, and that's the way to steal it. She make it an all mail election, and somehow he thinks that makes it easier to steal. Um, now, of course, the reason why now everybody's getting on board with doing all mail elections is because we have a pandemic that's ripping through the country, and a mail in election is a hell of a lot safer than people showing up in public, because the real like it's the most dangerous situation you could be in is a small area indoors with a lot of people and then throw in some poor ventilation and it's game over. It's not good. It's the last place you'd want to be. Well, elections kind of fit that description very well. Uh, so an all mail in election solves that problem. That's why we want to move in that direction. Is that, is that where you want to stop it? Oz is on mute again. Is that so, where you want to stop it? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You oh. know, Kyle, Kyle's got the same thing to say about this as I do pretty much, you know, yes, we know that we're in a pandemic and and mail ballots is going to be the safest. But, you know, I'm in Washington State. As you're in Washington State, we've had mail in ballots for many years now. I, I think five or six years. It's been an all state mail in, which is convenient. And I think that we do get more people to turn out to vote when you can just fill it out and drop it in uh, a mailbox. We had to fight for the postage to be paid for the last few years. We finally got that passed and we have ballot boxes now that you can drop them off in, in most towns. And uh, that was a fight to get those too. But here's the thing, I am a trained and election official. So I, I'm a vote observer. I go in on election day and I watch the ballots come in. I watch them go into the cages. I watch them be opened by the train, you know, vote counters. And then I watch how they're counted. And so what they do is they open them, they check the signature and they do check the signature on every single ballot to make sure that it hasn't been forged or done by somebody else. And they compare it to the signature on the screen that you signed your voter registration card for. And then from there, it gets put into a pile. And then that pile is fed into a scanner machine that counts them. And they, you know, normally we have a screen up or the auditor will have a screen up where they flash as they're being counted. And then you'll get a tally at the end of each pile and then they're, you know, compiled. But the problem with this system is, is, you know, once that count is done, it goes onto a flash drive. And then that flash drive is taken upstairs or taken, you know, the auditor takes it. And from there, the numbers are just given to the state. We, we have no chain of command, no custody for these ballots once they are opened and starting to be counted. We sure protect them before they get to the count. You know, uh, you have to have two people go to a ballot box to actually pick them up. When they're transported to your local courthouse, they're under lock and key. There's a chain of command up until the moment where they start counting them. And then as soon as they start counting them, there's no chain of command. We have no idea. We're just told the numbers and we're, you know, like, well, you're expected to believe that those are the real numbers. And in 2016, knowing how much support Jill Stein had in my county, I was shocked to see the number of votes versus what I saw go across the screen, you know? And that was my first, like, okay, maybe, maybe I'm thinking, maybe I'm projecting that there's more voting for her than there was, but then we've seen this time and time and time again. So I am concerned about a complete mail-in for the whole entire country. I, I think we can do it, but we need a better chain of command for these counts. I absolutely agree. I, 
You know, let me let me go back to 2016 again. Okay, so they have the primary. Bernie bends in the early, you know, or when he had to for Hillary. Okay, so then our our primary election was held in August, right? Okay, so guess what? Hillary won by a small margin, um, and all the establishment uh, tools were saying, "See, see, the people really didn't want Bernie. It was the damn caucuses that pushed Bernie over the edge." Well, guess what, guys? Um, I'll buy this vote for a moment just because a lot of people who did vote um, thought, well, Bernie's out of it, so we got to vote blue for Hillary so we don't get Donnie the the dandy Trump in there. Okay, I kind of buy it for a second, but then flash forward to, to, uh, to now, okay, to this election. You mean to tell me that before Bernie bends the knee, uh, takes a vote in Washington State, uh, Biden was it Biden that won in Washington State or or who was it I I don't remember but Bernie didn't win Washington State yeah Biden edged out after meticulous counting and hours and hours you know days passed before we had a count on that is that correct Shanda that is correct it took us over two weeks to um, call our election this time around and here's the thing so we don't have to declare a party in washington state to register it's a state of mind you're either democrat you're republican you're an independent well they saw what happened in 2016 where so many independents flooded their democratic party and voted democrat but did not toe the line and did not pass the purity test and moved on to jill stein in the general didn't stay with the dems so this time around they made us declare our party on the outside of our damn ballot so your mail lady now knows if you're a republican or a democrat you know your neighbor (laughs) if they saw your mail anybody who saw your mail would see this which i don't even have a problem with declaring the candidate that i'm party that i'm voting for as party but why on the outside of your ballot i mean that is a constitutional violation of my privacy and uh, many people thought that seventy thousand people plus seventy thousand plus did refuse to mark that box refused to declare a party you know i saw i was there the day that we were counting you know they're counting on election day and the joke was every time they would open one up somebody would write a note like you know this is a violation of my rights you know and they they would laugh as they were counting it but really that was designed to stop bernie that was all that was about in washington state was let's slow bernie down make them have to declare their party on the outside so I really don't think we'll have this in the future. I do believe that whoever becomes secretary of state and let's hope it's our guy, but I I do believe that they will remove that just because it made so many people mad, but it was intentional. It was done just to stop Bernie. Yeah, that was voter suppression in a big way. And it was the Bernie voter suppression. I, you know, the, the, the hate for Bernie uh, in this state is, is high as it is many of the so-called progressive states uh, you know, uh, the having those check marks on the outside of the ballot was pure and simple voter suppression, period. You know, because yeah. if you're going to vote, you know, Democrat, you're going to vote Democrat. If you're going to vote Republican. Well, having that check mark out there, the independents say, I don't want to sign fealty to either one of these damn parties. Are you kidding me? Yeah. There's no way. So it was it was basically extortion for you to vote. You have to check. And people are going to say, well, that's the rules in Washington state. You have to declare a party. Well, you know what? It's still extortion. You know, uh, we should have open primaries regardless. And I know both parties say, oh, no, you can't do that because the other party that's in power is going to come over and vote for the opposition that's going to be weakest to their incumbent power. Well, I don't think so. I don't, these days, with everything on the line the way it is, I don't think that's going to be as big of a factor. It's more of an excuse to suppress the vote and rule out progressive voters, independent voters for the likes of Bernie uh, on those issues, particularly Medicare for all. I bet you every single one of those voters that didn't put their check mark in the box were behind Medicare for all. I would say if you took a uh, if you took a poll that 90 percent and I'm shooting from the hip, 90 percent of those votes that got tossed, they were for Medicare for all. What do you think? I absolutely agree. You know, we formed a committee to cure our ballots because uh, the state 
auditor was allowing people, the secretary of state was allowing people to fix their ballot. And, you know, most people did it intentionally, like as a form of protest of, no, I'm not going to mark that box. I I'll vote for Bernie, but I'm not going to mark the Democrat. What, what 46% of the country is identifying as independents right now. Yep. So they forced our hand. They knew they forced our hands. And we have a Republican secretary. So that was kind of crazy that she even allowed it. And she wouldn't vote either. Do you know that she abstained? Ken Wyman Is abstained that, Ken, from Ken voting? She, yeah, she, uh, boy, she caught a lot of guff for that, didn't she? <laughs> As well, she should have. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just, I think it's something that everybody's talking about right now. Should we do this mail-in ballot? I, We need to. You know, I was so damn proud of Washington State when I was traveling in 2016 because we were one of the only states that had caucuses and we had open primaries. And, and what's so important, because we had both in 2016, if you remember, the caucus actually counted for Bernie and the primary. I don't even know why we held the primary, right? Hillary won the primary, but Bernie won the caucus by like 72 percent, where Hillary only won the primary by 52 percent. But the thing about the caucus is and I fought to save the caucus. The caucus gives us a chance to meet our neighbors, to talk about the issues and to network. And that was one of the strongest things that we came out of 2016 with as the Bernie delegates and supporters was is we went to our local caucuses and we met our neighbors who were Bernie supporters and we met our, you know, our, our people in our communities that were supporting the same I, the values and ideas that we were supporting. And that made us stronger. And that is exactly why they took the caucus away from us is because it made us too strong. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, it's uniting. It's true unity when you have those caucuses and people really, they know they have skin in the game. They just can't sit back and watch MSNBS or CN not news, uh, garbage propaganda they 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 know what's at stake and and typically unfortunately it's those under 65 who are still engaged who still invested into what's happening um you know some of the boomers like myself i'm one of the bald boomers that uh kind of relate to the generations on back uh, you know the mail-in ballot process i believe is a good thing chain of custody of those votes that's another thing like you pointed out it doesn't take anything for somebody to palm a drive. And if they are not watched, you know, closely enough, do you think that the establishment for either party is going to let the voters decide what policy is with all that power and money at stake? Look at the military industrial complex, pharma, you know, fossil fuels. Uh, they're not going to they're not going to let the people decide what's good for them. It's going to be the oligarch. And uh, inevitably, it's what's good for the oligarch, the overlords of the planet, Absolutely. the profiteers, the ones that are poisoning us all to death, uh, the ones that weren't ready for this pandemic that yet they've been told for decades it's coming. You right. know, the morons on the right and the morons on the left. Yes, you morons. You're really not <laughs> left, though. You're more of a little bit right of center now with your buddies on the other side of the line because you drink from the same trough of money they shove at you. So there again, I better get off my soapbox before your time Almighty runs Almighty dollar. It's always about the dollar. You know, living in Washington state, we have so many of these companies like Boeing and Amazon and, you know, that really dictate what's going to happen in our state and how it goes. So we just got to fight. I, I want to put it out there that all of us, let's support the mail-in, but let's support a, a chain of custody and getting rid of the machines that we know are corrupt. You know, we know the Diebolt machines can be hacked within like five seconds by a 10 year old kid. You know, how many times does it have to be proven? These are issues that we have to address, but a lot of people don't realize that it's even a problem. They think that their ballot just goes off. It, it, it's secure. It's counted and and it's not manipulated. But we've seen time and time again how it can be manipulated. And so if we're going to talk about it, let's talk about the whole entire issue. That's my take on it. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm sorry. I've got I've got some dogs that just 
love barking today. And we I, are puppy friendly here. Yeah, we are puppy to friendly here too. But I had to go out and scold them for a minute, so that's why I missed that. Where are we at now on the on the grand scheme of things in our brunch? Are we on to the? Uh, we are on to Sharon's clip, I believe. Okay, Sharon Abreu. Let me get that queued up. Uh, you want to give a little intro to this clip? You already did, sort of. So I'm yeah, gonna... you know, Sharon is uh, Sharon Abreu. She's an amazing activist and, and singer and performer. She lives up on Orcas Island, which is, I can see Orcas Island. It, it does look like an orca. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Um, it's a beautiful island up in the San Juans. And uh, she just created a song that embodies exactly how I feel, how it became that I am the accidental activist. And thank you so much, Sharon. It's so beautiful. It is. I, I just want to, Sandy's in the house. Environmental coffee house. Hi, Sandy. Humans here. Oh, man, this is great. Jilly, Lale. Okay, Sharon Abreu, beautiful song just for the accidental activist. Some say there are no accidents. I have to disagree. I was minding my own business when I became an activist, never thought I'd be, but sometimes things just happen and that's what happened to me. I'm an accidental activist, Whoa. what seemed to happen overnight sharp left turn I learned things I can't unlearn I'm on a strange new road and there's no return no return accidental activist Whoa. accidental So beautiful. Thank you so much, Sharon. Yeah, accidental activist. I, I'd like to see another chorus put in there. Maybe we can all sing that song together for all the activists, act, accidental or otherwise, because we need you guys. Come on, let's get active. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I honestly, I cannot wait for the the lockdown to be lifted a little bit. I, I'm doing really well at staying home, especially because my husband had a heart attack recently. So I've been like neurotic about not letting anybody here, not going out. When I go out, I mask up, I glove up. I, you know, I take a bath in <laughs> Purell every time because it's not about me. It's about him. And, and if I bring something back to him, it, it could kill him. And so I will stay locked down as long as I need to and we need to to keep each other safe. But uh, boy, my my wheels are spinning on what we can do when we are lifted because there's so many things that are going to need our attention. You know, how many people are losing their jobs? How many people are losing their insurance? How many people are, are food insecure right now? How many will lose their homes? There's just going to be so many issues for us to tackle as activists, you know, in, in the coming years, <laughs> the coming moments, you know. So I really think that as we're sitting home, let's talk about that and let's think about that. So at this time, I just want to take questions. You know, so many people are just seeing me for the first time the last few weeks on Uphill. Um, you know, go ahead and throw me some questions in the chat. Let's let's talk. Yeah, uh, we've got some comments here. I Let me see. Sharon just said, and if you spot a question, uh, go ahead and read it, Shanda. But yeah. um, Sharon Abreu says, we need to replace all of those Boeing MIC jobs as part of a just transition. And, you know, that said, it is what we want, a just transition. We're not trying to take any good paying job away from anybody as, as a group of activists. 
We are trying to make sure that those people who need those good jobs have a future, have a future for their families, their children, future generations. Whether you know it or not, guys, all you oil and gas people with these LNG plants, those great paying jobs, well, that's really a myopic view of a short-term solution to your economic woes. Uh, if your kids are going to die because the water in the air is poisoned to death 10 years down the road and take the planet out with them, I don't think that's a very secure future as far as going forward. What, what are your thoughts on that, Chanda? I agree. I agree. And we want those good paying jobs to be there. We don't want all low wage, you know, like we need those good paying jobs, but more and more they're disappearing, especially with the implementation of AI that's coming in, you know, like Boeing workers, how, how much of the factory Boeing jobs will be replaced with, you know, automatic machinery. We'll be fighting for those things too, you know. So I do have a question in here. It's from Lael. Uh, advice for dim enterers like me fighting for Bernie's issues, first time PCOs and alternate delegates applying for national. Oh, honey, I got a ton of words <laughs> for you. Um, wear your opinions close to your vest. Don't put them out there on Facebook would be my um, biggest piece of advice. Anything that they can weaponize against you, don't don't give it to them. Don't let them have it. Wear thick skin. Know that they're going to hate you. They are going to do everything they can to tear you down, to tear your message down and make you not want to come back. And I know like right now, a part of me kind of feels like, okay, I didn't file for PCO. So they won, right? They pushed me out as the, as the way some people are seeing it. But I made the decision not to go in, back into the Democratic Party this time around. I tagged out. I, I think this is a tag team type of situation where we have to have inside and outside strategies, which we do. We have amazing on, on all rounds. Um, just, just know you're going to take a lot of heat inside there, but we need you to do it. So I absolutely support all the dim enterers. It's so vital. It's so important what you guys are doing. Hold them accountable. Keep that mirror in front of their faces. Show them the hypocrisy of the things that they say and the things that they do. And thank you for going in. Thank you for tagging in. Thank you for allowing me to tag out and letting me have this platform so I can, you know, fight from a different angle. And that, yeah, that's the biggest thing. Yeah, I, I agree. And those of you who have questions or ideas that you don't feel comfortable shooting out there in that microcosm because of, you know, assault, threats, all that stuff, bring it to us. I have no problem um, giving a platform for your question, if not you, uh, saying it publicly you know i sure as hell will because they already hate my guts the the temperature drops 20 degrees when i walk <laughs> into some of these meetings but that's okay because you know what i'm 60 okay i've seen a lot in my lifetime and you know what i give a shit about the planet uh, the, the deer behind me here you know the birds and the bees and future generations and our public so come at me all you want because you can't take something away from me that hasn't already been taken away from as we speak daily we need to buck up and start standing our ground in a sensible, thoughtful way and connecting with other activists and independent exactly. thinkers around the country. So this is this is absolutely imperative. Now, Human uh, here says, guerrilla signage for democracy and voting rights. I agree, Human. We need to do that, along with pulse activism, pulse getting out in the streets, like the Yellow Vests, like the Hong Kong protests. Not, not a couple of hundred people, but thousands, because... Because the more numbers, the less risk to, you know, having your life disjointed and they'll take you seriously. So that's what we need to do. How do you feel about them apples, Shanda? Actually having a goal, you know, instead of just like, oh, well, we're going to have a protest march, you know, downtown. Have a goal. You're going to march somewhere. You're going to occupy a space when you get there. You're going to have a message when you get there. Don't just bring all these people out for busy work. That's what I call it. I call it busy work. You feel like you've done something, but you have absolutely accomplished nothing. You know, I think we have to be more focused. Uh, we need clarity on what we are doing, what our purpose is when we are performing in action like that, you know. I do see us getting so much stronger. I really do. In the last four years, we're coming together. I mean, our media is getting tighter. 
our the information we're moving around is is you know flowing a lot easier i i do see it improving i really do i do too and 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 again this is this is why i'm loving your your new show uh, you are the accidental activist, and this is a place, I hope on Sundays in particular, because I'm seeing a lot of dialogue here. People want to talk. This is a big part of the show. I think you should, you know, really consider having this engagement media aspect where you're asking questions and people can think about them during the week on these different topics. Yeah. Like Lael White here, she has, ad, do you have any advice for Dem Enters like me fighting for Bernie issues? First time PCO and alternate delegate applied to the national. What, what kind of advice would you give Lael on that? Network, network, network. Um, get to know the people that are in your area. Get to know the the people that are supporting the issues that you support. And that way you have them there to support you. You know, when you're inside the Democratic Party, the biggest thing is, is, is the vote because everything's done by parliamentary, right? So that is the key to our voice is parliamentary procedure inside the Democratic Party. So knowing parliamentary is, is so key, being able to make a motion and having somebody that can second that motion is so important because you can throw a beautiful motion out on the table. But if you turn around and the 50, you know, little hillbots behind you won't motion second it it dies. So, you know, you have to form these little groups to go in and to fight them is, is where we had the most success is, you know, when we had 10 of us and we say, okay, you take this motion and you take that motion and, and, and know what's coming up, read the agendas, know what they're coming at you with. So that way you can read, you know, one of the most powerful things that we have in parliamentary is amendments, being able to amend a resolution and rewrite it, you know, they came at us in 2017 with a, a, a resolution that said they wanted an investigation into Donald Trump and the Russian collusion. And here we are just shaking our heads saying the Russian collusion. Don't you mean the DNC collusion, you know? So we hurried up and we revised that amendment to say, no, we want a full investigation. If you guys are going to call for one into Russia, we want a look into the DNC and everything else. So it's just being quick on your feet and being able to, you know, come back at them is so important inside the Democratic Party. It really, it's a tough thing to be in there fighting, you know? It Especially is, and it's a necessary thing. And again, I think we've talked about this before, Shanda, is we know how hard it is to hold your nose and vote for somebody, but we should step it up a notch, not mostly on the vote, but we can't give up ground within the Democratic Party because there are rules of procedure. This is why Larry Taylor is doing what he does with PDPR and real he's a real parliamentarian. To give up that ground and to let those establishment tools do whatever they want, that's another front we're fighting because look what's happened. They have their establishment tools in our Congress, our Senate, as leading the fight for the people. Are you effing kidding me? They're <laughs> leading the fight for their donors, their Monsantos, their Raytheons, the rest of them. Hilarious. So again, we we have to we have to take it on on all fronts. You know, whether it's a social war or a uh, a peaceful you know uh, strike or reaction. You know these 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 massive strikes, these shutdowns are necessary. We need to do that to get ahead. Now we've got Pat the Batman fan has a critique of you. It's not a critique. I I take it as a compliment. Pat the Batman fan. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, <laughs> Carlin Pat. knew. Carlin knew. Shanda sounds almost exactly like Jimmy Dore's wife, Steph. You know what? Now that I think about it, Pat, she does. She st sounds a lot like Steph Zamorano. Do I sound like I, Steph? I love Steph. I love Steph, I, too. She's I fantastic. I so respect Steph. She is such a smart, smart woman. You know, um, the fact that she was a teacher for so many years, I love that. You know, she, all she wanted to do was help the people. And, yeah, I have great respect for Steph and for Jimmy. I don't always agree with everything that Jimmy says. You know, there's a lot of times he goes off on a tyrant that I am not supportive of, but I still support him. And I understand where he's coming from because I've been there for five years. So his attacking of Bernie, you know, people are like I'm done with him. He's attacking Bernie. No, he's just saying what nobody else has actually had the balls to say. And that is, Hey, Bernie's let us down time and time and time again. And, and I don't, you know, blame Bernie. Bernie is Bernie. He, he woke so many of us up. He, he has done a great service for us. It's time to move on. But yeah, I don't, I don't attack Jimmy for his opinion. He's, he's, 
Yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy's pretty pretty passionate about it, and he it's pretty pretty bad. Some of the stuff he really <laughs> spanks, you know, call him a call him some pretty terrible names. But it's at the, the same guy. time, that's his shtick. Jimmy's a shock kind of guy. He's well, like a modern day Lenny Bruce to me. And he all is. The, he yeah, is. And, and he you is, know, he's a comedian. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And he's even said he liked Bernie, and he's so disappointed in how Bernie is walking through D.C. And I always say, well, OK, I'm disappointed and I really think he's wrong, but I'm not walking in his shoes in the halls of Congress. We are outside. This is why I say again, don't give up that battle with inside the party if you have to eat a little bit of crap to, to put on with it, because that's the front that we need to. Yeah, we have to do that. But you don't have to accept the edicts coming down from the the positions of power within the party. I mean, Shanda, you went through that in your district uh, back when, you know, you had consensus. What What's that slide that has the meeting difference between the progressives in your area and the actual Dems? Um. Which one is that? The People's Summit, no doubt, coming home. Yeah. yeah, that's really kind of telling here. I, it's I, like 10 or 11, I want to say. Yeah, let me see if I can find that. Is that it right there? Yeah, that's it right there. Take a look at this slide. Okay, now here's Shanda's meeting on the bottom left-hand corner there. Now tell us about that meeting and tell us what the meeting was up on top there. <laughs> so the bottom meeting was on Fridays. You know, it, we started out with Colum County for Bernie and... um actually the establishment had formed that committee way before i even came in and uh we just people just started showing up you know um working moms that we'd have kids running around you know we th these meetings turned so big that we actually had to start moving them because the fire marshal was saying that we were violating the you know our capacity and then as you can see the top picture that is a legislative district meeting in the same county that should be a huge meeting should be you know it's a reorg meeting and as you can see by then people are just giving up because they don't want to talk about the issues that they want to talk about you know people want to talk about things that affect them their lives immediately right now what what's causing them problems and you know yeah. yeah yeah my experience with a reorg meeting i was running for chair of a good for you <clears throat> of a ld and I, you know, I had a good platform and this was back before Bernie and they were all about Obama back then, you know, Obama, this Obama, that. And I'm thinking, well, OK, well, let's see what he has to offer. Well, I decided that after Obama bent the knee and put Wall Street into his cabinet, the next reorg, I was going to run for chair. Well, the tools in the party basically went around and said, oh, no, don't vote for that guy. Vote for her or vote for him. And they basically, you know, took the vote. And I lost, of course, because of either how I looked or my positions I stand, because it wasn't based on the issues. It was it was the club mentality. And, you know, that's fine. But this is what happens is this picture up in the left hand corner. When you do that to people right in front of their face, you break it off in their eye. And, uh, you know, you say, it doesn't matter what you think. You've got to go along with the club. You've got to be part of this cult, which is absolutely ridiculous. Yet they call us a cult. They call us a cult. And I'll challenge any of you out there that might see this. I know you've got, you mentioned earlier on, Shandy, you've got a lot of fans about this platform you've got. I invite them to <laughs> tangle with me as well. I stand with you. I believe Thank women. You. I believe human beings who give a shit about the planet, about where we're going, about our children's future. So... The accidental activist and so many of you out there who are activists and you don't know it yet, you're coming along. So we're we're right. running long into the hour. You want to uh, have some closing here? Yeah. So I want to say that this will be the last just kind of like focus on me and what I have done. Getting to know you, do. getting to know you, getting to know yes, all about getting to you. Know me. I have a great show in the pike for next Sunday brunch. I have one of the Venezuelan embassy protectors who is filming a documentary. He wrote a book. He he runs a Vanguard youth radio program in florida and he was just on venezuelan radio uh yesterday the day before he's amazing um we're gonna hear from him we're gonna hear his stories of what actually went down at the venezuelan embassy and the two failed coup attempts in venezuela um as we move out of my self-centric thing right here some should know i am very uh 
interested in foreign policy and history. I, I feel like history is doomed to repeat itself if we don't look at it, what's happening around the world. And if you really want to know the truth of what's happening in the United States, you need to look to outside of the United States media. So I follow a lot of media around the world, Hindu news, you know, Chinese uh, it doesn't matter if it's not American. I'll watch it just to see what they're saying, you know. And so we're going to go down that. And then <clears throat> Thursday, we'll we'll have a guest, too. So I'm really excited to uh, bring you guys some of these activists that I've encountered moving through the movement the last five years. Well, I'm, I'm excited about that. And thank you so much for uh, allowing me to help you produce and engineer your show. Uh, we're, we're here for everybody that's interested in doing this. We want to cross support. Everybody out there, we have shows coming up. Uh, we have him in the pipe, Pap, the Batman fan. Actually, he's working on Carlin New, which is a, a, a great concept for a show. We have shows every day, The Daily Dive, and Shanda's been on and will be on quite a bit. We've got a pretty good lineup on The Daily Dive. Um, accidental activist on Thursdays. We have one tonight. We have an OR meeting tonight that might be interesting to the group here. Um, and we, we, we want suggestions, we want support, we want, we want, we want, we want, we want all this stuff. But it's not a lot, we ask. We, we ask that you unite with us. Let's embrace each other's activism and uh, get on that platform of saving the pla planet and moving forward with the policies that's going to best serve the people and, and the inhabitants of the entire planet. Don't forget the, uh, the natural progressive Christine Lund is fantastic. She's got an interview coming up a week from Monday with Derek Jensen. Once again, great interviews. Um, Shanda, th we're going to try th your song again that you have graciously adopted after I offered it to you. You want to give a little insight on this as we go out for the day? And thank you, everybody. Schultzy, Jilly, everybody. Veg, human, uh, Jilly, everybody for joining us today. Thank you, chat, for being so kind to me and everybody at Uphill and Roar Media. You guys have just opened your arms. You've welcomed me. You've set me free to just be who I am, to say what I need to say. And this song really encapsulates that, that, you know, I'm stepping away from the Dems and everything I've done the last five years to really focus on activism, these incredible activists. And, and, and if you know these activists, if you know somebody I should talk to or Oz, please email the show, email me at the serious activist at gmail.com. Let me know what you think. And Oz, thank you for giving me this song. It's so beautiful. Oh, thank you for letting me do a, a, a part do. Let's try it again. It got a little distorted on Thursday night's premiere. I think I've got it this time. So here we go. This is by Michelle Contreras. She's in the Netherlands. The 2001 Eurovision uh, Spring Contest. Beautiful song. Um, I, I, I just love it. So here we go. Have a great day, everybody. Have a great day. Be safe out there. Turn around, life begins out on my own. Follow the sun from day to day, three years of birth. Now is the time to spread my. Yeah.